Ford High School Weekly is brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue, it's Boomer Q. Welcome to Ford High School Weekly. I'm your host, Dion Amade. On this week's episode, part two of our conversation with Union's District Athletic Director, Emily Barkley. And a little later, we'll have highlights from last week's Ford Game of the Week telecast. Now, let's go back to Emily Barkley. Emily, how's it going? Great. Thanks for having me today. Uh, thanks for joining us. I, I really appreciate you talking with us. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. We've uh, wrapped up an exciting week of zero week football and so getting ready to head into the rest of the season. Man, I, that quick question before we get started is that like with football season coming around with you guys, how intense is it for you in preparation wise? You know, there's a lot of things that uh, go into preparing and the first game of the season always seems to be one that just gets you um, you know, on your toes and go through all the checklists. We had a grand opening of the stadium this past Friday. And so um, it was just a little heightened uh, awareness, working a lot of extra hours on the weekends and at nights to prepare for it. And now I feel like we're in a groove and, and we'll be ready for some big upcoming games. We'll talk a little bit more about that grand opening in the later on in the interview. But first and foremost, how, how did you get involved in athletics? I mean, I'm talking about from the way, way back when you were first picked up any kind of ball or, or bat. Well, how did you get involved in athletics? So I'm a second child. And so I had a, a sister that would play things and get to do things. And I was the one tagging along, um, wanting to always be in there. My mom said I would come to you know, all the practices with my shin guards on ready to play. And so just got into soccer and basketball at a young age and actually stayed with that throughout my high school career. Um, and so that's where my passion grew. I had a tremendous experience as a student athlete here at Union. I'm a Union 1996 proud Union grad. Um, and the experience I had with my coaches and um, the people I was surrounded with just really uh, led me to want to be a part of it um, just so much more. Uh, I didn't go on to college to play. I had a few opportunities to play small college basketball and soccer, but um, my passion, I knew I wanted to be back in an athletic role. And so I went over to the University of Tulsa um, and they had a sports administration program and I just fell in love with it on the day I toured the university. And so I was able to go to school there and um, volunteer coach back at my high school throughout my time in college. So after playing at, at Union, you moved on to TU. And, and what was that experience like, like in college? I know you mentioned that you coached as well as, as being a student. It sounds like a heavy task to, to bear. So what was that experience like? I had a great um, experience over at TU. I worked in the women's basketball office where um, in 1996, it was the first year they had women's basketball back at TU after a hiatus. And um, they didn't have enough players to play five on five. And so myself and um, a tennis player, a girls tennis player, and about three of the boy managers would scrimmage them every day and, you know, kind of got to be around it, got to know the coaches. I um, was actually offered a scholarship my freshman year because I think they just didn't have enough players. Um, I kind of was already in retirement mode. I, uh, I, I declined it. My, I think my parents still wonder what I was thinking, but <laughs> I, I did. And because I knew um, I really knew what I wanted to do. I in high school, I had decided I wanted to be an athletic director. I I loved our athletic director at Union, Benny Dixon. He um, made things fun. He knew who we were and I wanted to be able to give that same experience back. And so I would go into his office um, as a high school student. And one day I said, I'm going to take your job one day. And I think it was probably a day that he had been up to his limit in, in concerns and complaints. And he said, well, you can have it right now. So I, I was able to get some of those experiences um, over at TU and, and build a relationship. Judy McLeod was the athletic director at the time. And so who was a better role model for me than Judy um, as a female in this sport and then me getting to see and get to know her firsthand during my time at TU. Well, they must have respected you a lot to try to offer you the job when you were like 18 or 19 years old. <laughs> So you mentioned that you coached as well at, at, at Union, and um, did you do other coaching after you graduated from, from TU? So I was just a student coach. I went back and helped my old high school basketball coach, and then she retired a few years later, and the new coach coming in had kind of asked me if I would stay along. Um, you know, he was new to the program. I had known him and didn't really want to leave him 
hanging at that time. And so I finished my undergraduate at TU with an athletic administration in the business school, um, a degree from there, kind of pleaded my case to Judy and had told her what I wanted to do and be someday. And so there was an academic advisor position. Um, I worked primarily with the incoming freshman football players. Um, I volunteered for every event possible on campus from football games to the WAC basketball tournament back then to tennis tournaments and golf tournaments, um, just to kind of get to get my face out there and to learn what it was all about. Um, so my, my work at Union was just basically volunteering, just helping coaches um, from time to time. I didn't have the full time to devote to it, but I liked to be around it and I wanted to be around it. And so um, I did that. I, I went to TU from 96 to 2002 and had my uh, MBA whenever I left there. And um, I had a job outside of athletics for about nine months before Coach Blankenship, uh, who was the AD and head football coach, called and said, I think I have something for you if you want to come back to Union. And and then it's uh, that was in 2004, and I've been here ever since. Man, only nine months out out of there, and then they was like, nope, nope, we need you. Come on back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, you know, Coach Blankenship, like I said, he was um, the head football coach when I was a student in high school, and um, he actually, ironically, lived a half a mile from where my dad owned Amazio's Pizza growing up, and he had seen my work at ethic in there, and um, so years later had told me he was impressed by that and um, he knew what my passion was and kind of took a chance on me and so um, you know 19 years later here we are when we come back we'll talk with emily about the new union tuttle stadium and share some insights into the mid first bank backyard bowl which is coming up next on your view stick around for high school weekly we'll be right back Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Now, Union has a new football stadium, and one of the people involved in bringing that to Union, Emily Barkley. Emily, how was it bringing that brand new stadium in these last, last couple of weeks? What was the what, what kind of work went behind that? Um, it's been you know about a three year process from the time that we uh, dropped the home side of the stadium and. Um, they've they've been working on it. We actually had the home side back this past uh, last season, but we were able to do a grand opening of the entire complex with the addition of the fine arts uh, wing that is on the end of the building. And so there it was just um, all summer long. You know, we thought we had so much time preparing for this this first football game. And then you look up and it's here. Um, there's last minute gates being put in and uh, lights being fixed and our video board, which is just tremendous to watch a high school football game at. Um, it, it took a lot of people and a lot of time and just the buzz around here with our kids. They're just so excited and so proud to be a part of this new era of Union football. All right. I went and watched the scrimmages the two weeks ago and I saw the home side, the Stadium looks beautiful, but you know in Oklahoma now that Oklahoma State put that big jumbotron, they, they're calling it the Godzilla Tron, and now I see y'all's. Now, how big is that thing? So ours is uh, 38 by 55, and and the square footage of it is one of the largest. I I, I hate to say largest in Oklahoma. I believe it is square footage wise. Um, but it is just a I, I joke around that my new big screen TV got installed because I can see it right outside my window. But um, if, if you haven't seen it up and running, that is something that you need to. And you can actually see it from about a half a mile away when you're at some of the local businesses. So it's it's nice and it's big and uh, it's been a lot of fun watching. For, apparently, we just like really like big TVs big <laughs> in Oklahoma because that thing is ginormous. Is it? Have you heard anything from the players about or other teams that come into the stadium say, saying it's distracting or it's 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 just big or, or is it you know affecting the play any? Um, I haven't noticed it affecting the play. I do think that um, our coaches are having a lot of fun playing with it right now. They've uh, they put the scout team card up on the jumbotron so that they, um, you know, so that our players are more efficient during practice. Uh, we they watched um, Thursday night's game up on the big screen, uh, kind of a a way to scout the game and they invited the players to come back. So they're, they're getting a lot of use out of it other than just Friday nights. And it's been a lot of fun to watch. 
So what went behind like putting some of that stuff up is like, what kind of red tape do you have to go through to do the stadium, video board, all that kind of stuff? What's some of the things the viewers wouldn't be aware of that y'all had to kind of go through? Well, we have a, a full-time video production. Andy Irwin um, has been doing all that. So he creates graphics and uh, works with our sponsors um, to have commercials and videos for all that. You know, there's um, a video production room up in the new press box. Um, and then, uh, of course, all the, the wiring and the behind the scenes to get that up and running um, just to have it play. Um, but there, there was a lot of uh, time and effort. And, you know, you kind of hold your breath until that that new or until the first game and it's actually working and everything worked perfectly. And we're so thankful for that. As far as the small details that you would, wouldn't think would be a big issue, but was kind of a, a tall task to kind of get through that people wouldn't be aware of what kind of small things that you have to handle to get that stadium up and running. Well, I remember last year, right before our first game and, um, we the just the even the bathrooms, the entrance and the exit to it weren't clearly marked. And so I kind of looked at our operations people and said, how would somebody know that's a boy's bathroom and that's a girl's bathroom? And, you know, everybody's going, oh, I thought, you know, it has it on this side. And I said, well, not on this one. And or the door handle is an exit only, but it has one on each side. So you've got people walking all kinds of ways. Uh, we did a walkthrough about a week ago and there weren't there wasn't a gate on on one of our um uh, fences that were out there. And I thought, are we going to have this by next week? Because uh, this will be a free for all for everybody to get in. But, you know, we made it work and our, and our operations team and our grounds crew and everybody just had everything looking great for last Friday. Well, congratulations once again on that. It was uh, impressive from, from what I saw and I, I can't wait to see more of it. Thank you. Well, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit about some football coming up here. The Backyard Bowl, everybody's favorite rivalry. We'll talk more on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. We're talking with Emily Barkley from the Union School District. Now, that Backyard Bowl is something that everybody all over town, all over the state of Oklahoma is aware of, and they're always ready for that game. What is it like to be on one of those two sides when that game actually takes place? Well, as an athletic administrator, it's always fun to be on the visiting side because there is a lot of work and a lot of stress that goes into that. Really? I, I know my friends at Jinx would echo that. We uh, we used to joke about, you know, now it's your home game, right? Because there's just so many decisions that have to be made. Um, you know, there's it's it's an exciting game. It's two communities that are seven miles apart that – um, you know, honestly, win or lose doesn't define your season, but it it shows you a benchmark of where you're at. And so there are so many things that go into that. First and foremost, we have a sponsorship from um, Midfirst Bank that picked that up 19 years ago. Um, and so it's the Midfirst Bank Backyard Bowl. Um, and their support has been extremely helpful for us. And um, just, you know, the excitement that goes, it's, it's a community event. It's not just a football game and the amount of people that get excited and get involved um, from both school districts is just really incredible to watch. So how did that whole sponsorship come about with Midfirst Bank? Um, they approached both of us as, uh, you know, both of our school districts and, and said, if, you know, we want to partner, we want to provide some academic resources to you. Um, to help with this and we want to be your title sponsor for it and it you know it was a win-win for all of us um, they've been able to give money back to our schools that we use for academic services um, for our students and um, just the the partnership and the sponsorship and it seems like all three parties have been um, you know pleased with it we've been able to um, be on Cox I believe all, uh, all 19 years. And so we feel like there's even a partnership there um, that we enjoy. And, and like I said, it's just a, it's an incredible environment, um, not just for those football players, but for cheer and our band and our palm and our high steppers and students and, you know, anybody that gets involved in it just has, has a great time and it's a great uh, event to be at. Well, I want to say for the people here at Cox Yearview, we really appreciate you guys letting us continue to do the game. But real quick, is there any bit of a friendly wager between? I know you guys see the Jinx uh, administration uh, quite a bit. You guys probably go to the same conferences and see each other at stores and whatnot. So is there any kind of friendly wager going on during these rivalry games? 
You know, I, I don't think we've ever uh, been brave enough to do that because even if, you know, they're ranked number one or we're ranked number one, it doesn't matter in this game. It's, it's you know, it's like the Duke, North Carolina. It's, it's those games that uh, no matter what, you bring out each other's best. And so I don't think any of us are um, – confident enough to 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 do that to any side but I think what I love about it is and this goes from uh, athletic departments on down is there such a respect between the two schools and respect for people um, in those jobs that uh, Tony Dillingham and Jason Kohler not only you know the success that they've had at Jinx but you know I'm proud to call them my friends and and if I needed anything, could call them. And so it's exciting. I think there's always a sigh of relief when that game's over because of how much is poured into it. Um, and we also know, you know, hopefully we usually shake hands and say, I hope we see you in the state finals because I, I truly think um, that we, both of our schools have so much respect for each other um, that we, you know, enjoyed doing, playing against each other for so many years in, in that high stakes game that um, we know that this game, while it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of the season, um, it's a like I said, it's a good benchmark, and uh, we hope that it propels us to get to see each other later on in the year. Well, I really enjoy watching those games and taking part of them as well. So again, thank you for allowing us to be a part of it, and thank you again for joining us this evening. Yes, and we look forward to having you here at Union next Friday night. Coming up next, Highlights from another great week of Ford Game of the Week action here on Ford High School Weekly. Welcome back to Ford High School Weekly. Let's check out the highlights from last Friday's Ford Game of the Week doubleheader. Starting with Edmund Santa Fe at Choctaw. Break it down for us, Dion. Yeah, well, we got the scoring started off first by Malachi Miller executing that zone read. See him look at it read the end get into the end zone but my man still also said i got you right here juju smith knocking down not one but two defenders on his path to the end zone dive for the pylon extraordinary effort but they would answer back isaiah fields taking on defenders knocking them down getting to the end zone and getting the score for the wolves but tommy you would make an answer right back, put the three on the board for the Choctaw Yellow Jackets, and that gives you our score for the first half, 17 to 13. In the third quarter, Edmund Santa Fe got things going on the ground. Quarterback Malachi Miller picks up big yards here. The Wolves grab the lead at the end of the possession with another Isaiah Field touchdown run. This one three yards out, putting the Wolves up 20 to 17 early in the third quarter. Midway through the quarter, it was the man of steel again. Still Wassel hits a wide open Jack Smith who avoids two tacklers at the six and cruises into the end zone for a 55 yard touchdown. The Yellow Jackets went up 24 to 20. Late in the quarter, after Choctaw's defense stops Edmund Santa Fe at the Choctaw five yard line, the next play, Still Wassel pitches it to Latrell Ray and the senior running back breaks into the open field cuts back near midfield, then runs 95 yards for a touchdown to expand Choctaw's lead 31 to 20. An inside reverse from backup quarterback Cash Williams to Juju Smith made the final score, Choctaw 37, Edmund Santa Fe 20. Next up, Allen Triple Stadium in Jinx, where the Trojans hosted Owasa. Well, let's take a look back at the recap of this one, Rod. And just kind of a rough start for both teams <laughs> because so many different parts and missing pieces and injuries and both teams were just struggling to get something going consistently. Yeah, it started with Christian right there. He was able to come away with it and make some plays. And, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Go right back to him this time for the touchdown. Owens to Christensen able to punch it in and give Jinx on the board. And put him up 7-0. Able to get it done. Now coming right back, and boy, that right there, we thought it may have been a turnover, but it wasn't. The defense was really stepping up big. Then a couple of bad snaps right here. And we talked about it, Zig. New guys everywhere, so trying to make adjustments. Big game. They knew your view was here. And how about this guy, the freshman trying to get outside. Hall trying to make some things happen. This guy, look at Malvo, Elijah Malvo with the block. 
And this guy right here able to run it in. Frank Field. And boy, got a Wasso going. The offense couldn't get going. Malvo with the block. Frank Field. Take the, take the helmet off. Let them know it's you, young fella. <laughs> get on the board. Defense generating offense. And Owasso was right back in this game. Then right back at you. Boy, we thought we had Christensen right there. And he dropped it. And this was a play right here. Blocked. And coming back, you know, you see Hall right there. Wasn't able to get it. But then this guy, Mr. Schilling, our player of the game. Boy, he was running through tackles. Making something happen. One man's misfortune is another man's opportunity. And boy, Schilling taking advantage of it. And he wasn't done. Look at him follow the blockers up front. Able to punch it in and getting it done. The sophomore. Hey, he was working tonight. And he was at anchor offensively for the Jinx Trojans and able to get it done. There you see the two coaches right there. And boy, what a game. You take a look at the stats right here. 14-17, Jinx get it done. We look at rushing, 135 to 137, 103 to 88 on the passing. First down's pretty even, no turnovers. We had a lot of penalties right there. Eight of 48 for the Rams and four of 20 for the Trojans. But Jinx, they get to win 14-7. Still going all the way down and in the end zone. Check for flags, Deion because otherwise Latrell Ray is taking it to the house. What a run by Latrell Ray. Be sure to go to yourview.com slash OK for highlights and replays of the board game of the week. And check out our podcast and past episodes at yourview.com slash OK. The 19th edition of the Mid-First Bank Backyard Bowl is next. It's one of Oklahoma's favorite high school football rivalries, and it's right here on your view. Remember, only the best in Oklahoma, like Union AD, Emily Barkley, make the Ford High School Weekly. So thank you for watching, and until next time, I'm Deanna Mane. Ford High School Weekly has been brought to you by your Oklahoma Ford dealers. Ford is the best in Oklahoma. And by Billy Sims Barbecue. It's not just barbecue, it's Boomer Q.